Genesis chapter 5, verse 24 says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We are a blessed people tonight. Lord, if we got what we deserved, we'd be in hell. But Lord, we're thankful one day you went to the cross of Calvary and you did pay it all. You paid our sin debt. Lord, we're thankful. Lord, you was buried and rose again just like you said you would. And God, we're thankful for the church and the perpetuity of the church. Lord, we're thankful that, Lord, in your providence... When people came to America with the gospel, and Lord, we heard the gospel. Lord, we've been born again. What a blessing. Lord, we don't deserve any of it, but we're certainly grateful. And thankful, Lord, for the good hand of God and how you've worked in our lives. Now, God, you know what we stand in need of tonight. God, I pray you'd help us from the word of God. I pray that, Lord, you would grow our faith. Lord, I certainly pray that our, our glow for thee would shine much brighter than it ever has before. Now, Father, I do pray for those that are sick, that, God, you'd touch them, those that are providentially hindered, you'd help them. And, God, I, I, I just pray that, Lord, you'd manifest your will to every heart tonight. Use this unworthy vessel. Get glory to your name. Bless Brother Amos' revival next week. Bless the revival down there in Quincy. And God, we just pray that you'd be glorified in it all. And God, you'd send revival. Maybe even send one starting tonight. And God, we pray that Jesus would be certainly exalted and glorified and magnified. Now, Father, have your will and way. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, this is a very interesting verse. I want you to notice, first of all, the assiduous. Uh, Enoch it says Enoch didn't say Moses didn't say Abraham didn't say Peter James and John didn't say Paul didn't say Noah it's a fellow who's mentioned very few times and in very few verses in all the Bible but his name tells us about all we need to know his name is assiduous, which simply means uh, his name means he's devoted, means he's dedicated. I wonder how that can be said about us. Are we devoted? Are we dedicated? So, preacher, we're here tonight. That's a blessing, but I didn't want to ask you. We see Enoch. Notice not only the assiduous, notice the activity said, and Enoch sat and listened. Is that what it said? Said, Enoch fit God in. Is that what it said? No, it said, and Enoch walked. That's a progressive word. Yes, sir. I don't know when he started. I do know there came a point when he stopped. And he just was with him face to face. But Enoch walked with God. Amen. Hmm. Notice, if you will, the alignment. And Enoch walked in front of God. Is that what it says? Behind God. Is that what it says? He walked with God. Yes. I understand Jesus is the good shepherd, the great shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. And the shepherd leads the sheep. But Enoch had such a relationship with God, he walked with God. Does that apply to you and I tonight? Amen. We see his activity, we see his alignment, notice his alteration. The Bible said, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not. There was a day when he was... But then a change happened. He was not. I don't know what transpired, Brother Ray, but Enoch might have kissed Miss Enoch on the cheek and headed out like he did every other day to walk with God. And God finally said, Enoch, the world's no more worthy of you. Just come on up here with me. But there was a change happened. My dear friends, uh, 
the day you got born again, there should have been a change happen. If there's never been a change after your profession, you didn't get born again. You might have got religion, but you didn't get born again. But can I say there's coming a day for the believer when there's going to be another change? When we're going to put off of this uh, mortality and put on immortality. We're going to put off this corruptible and put on incorruptible. Well, we're going to get a body fashioned like the darling Son of God. Uh, there's going to come a day when we was here on earth and we was not. They can't find us because uh, we'll be living forever with the Lord. Paul said to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. We see his alteration. And then we see his awarding. And he was not, for God took him. Amen. Can I say, Enoch didn't die. No, sir. Right. Enoch and Elijah, neither one died. No, sir. They're a great picture. One day there's going to be a translation process. The dead in Christ are going to rise uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together. Well, there's coming a day when some of us sitting here tonight aren't going to die. God's just going to take us. Hmm? Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 5, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. I wonder how long they looked for him. Here, Enoch, Enoch, Enoch. Huh? Said because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Yeah. Amen. Let me ask you, can that be said of you and I? Amen. Do we please God? Didn't ask you if you knew him. I asked you if you pleased him. Hmm? Now, in your Bible, some 390 times, you'll find some way or form or fashion of the word walk. As believers, as New Testament Bible believers, saved, children of God, join heirs to the throne of Christ, sons and daughters of God, can I say we are commanded to walk with God. The Bible says in Colossians 2, 6, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. Can I say this? If you're not in Him, you can't walk with Him. Galatians 5, 25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 1 John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. That's not talking about you and I having fellowship. It's talking about us having fellowship with God. Uh, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Yep. We find Enoch walk with God, and we find that believers are commanded to walk with God. Yep. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. I'm reading your mind right now. Preacher, Enoch didn't live in a day like our day. You know, Enoch didn't have... Uh, to work a job, and Enoch didn't have all the pressure, and Enoch didn't have all the technology, and society wasn't as bad, and all those kind of things. I know what you're thinking. Because, see, you just read that verse, and you don't even, even begin to fathom how it was in Enoch's day. Can I say that Enoch walked with God despite his responsibilities? Look with me in verse 22. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years. That's verse 21. And begat Methuselah. Look at verse 22. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Now, I don't know how many sons he had. I don't know how many daughters he had. But he walked with God for 300 years. And in 300 years, I mean, if Donald and Crystal be married a couple years, already have one. How many did him and Mrs. Enoch have in 300 years? Now, let me help you with something. In Bible times, women didn't work. They had babies. They fixed food. Who do you think fed all them kids? Whose responsibility was that? 
Enoch's. So Enoch just didn't stroll around with God all day and do nothing else. Enoch walked with God despite his responsibilities. Can I say, uh, if you're working on a car, you can still walk with God. Can I say, uh, if you're sitting in an office at a desk, you can still walk with God. Uh, Can I say that uh, no matter what your uh, job and no matter what responsibilities you have, you still should be walking with God. He did despite his responsibilities. I don't know how many mouths he had to feed, but it's a bunch. And can I say, Amazon wasn't hiring in Enoch's day. He walked with God despite his responsibilities. Let me ask you, are you? Can I say this about Enoch? He walked with God in lieu of his ripened age. Look at verse 23. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years old. He lived to be 365 years of age, and he's still walking with God. Where in the Bible does it say you reach an age where you hand it over to the young people and you're not supposed to work for God anymore? Well, somebody please show me chapter and verse for that. I'm I'm waiting. I do see in the Bible where the aged women are to teach the younger women how to love their husbands. Boy, it's getting quiet in here. Huh? Well, I can't get around like I used to, neither could Enoch, but he still walked with God. Hmm? There is no stopping point in the Bible. There ain't no arriving point in the Bible. I, I've yet to figure out when we arrive to the point we don't have to study the Bible anymore, we don't have to come to church anymore, we don't have to come to Sunday school anymore, we don't have to live for God anymore, we can just sit down and wait for Jesus to come. I don't find that in the Bible. Amen. Can I say, in lieu of his ripened old age of 365, by the way, I'll just give you this, when you get 365 years of age, you can sit down on God too. Until then, you better be walking with God. Right. Amen, Pastor. Hmm. Can I say this? Enoch walked with God regardless of what society or anyone else was doing. He just walked with God. Amen. Can I say? It wasn't popular in Enoch's day either. Hmm. Matter of fact, not too many years off after he goes off the scene, God sends a flood and wipes out the whole world. Sure. Why? Because it repented God that even made man because every thought of man was evil continually. Yes, sir. Can I say they wasn't running to the tabernacle even though there wasn't such a one to worship God back in Enoch's day. You know why it doesn't talk about a whole lot of people serving God back in Enoch's day? Because there wasn't many. Can I say, ever since Adam and Eve fell, man's heart has been deceitful and wicked. And can I say, it's never been easy to be a light. But in lieu of that, And regardless of what anybody thought, Enoch walked with God. Verse 24 of Genesis chapter 5 is an indictment against every so-called excuse not to serve God that anybody would ever have. Because he did it. If he did it, we can do it. Because I got news for you. Enoch wasn't made out of anything we're not made out of but we had an advantage. Enoch was not indwelled by the Spirit of God like we are, and Enoch didn't have a copy of the Word of God like we do. Hmm? Can I say, Moses didn't pin this down until generations later. And by the way, I've read every verse on Enoch, and nowhere does Enoch talk about himself. Moses talks about him. The writer of Hebrews talks about him. 
Enoch never talks about himself. If you've got to go around telling everybody what you've done with God and, and how you've done this with God and how you've walked with God, you probably aren't doing anything. Amen. Enoch was so consumed with God, he didn't care what anybody else thought. Hmm? Now, now that you're all mad at me, I gave you opportunity to sing. I gave you opportunity to testify. You said you was ready for preaching. Where's that attitude right now? I'm going, I, I need some support right here. I need some participation right here. You ready to participate? All right, I'm going to ask you something. Can you all see me over there? What am I doing right now? Stepping. What am I doing now? Is there a difference between walking and stepping? That's what I want to preach on. I want to preach on stepping with God instead of walking with God. Stepping with God instead of walking with God. Again, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You say, Preacher, I, I'm, I'm walking with God. I prayed today. When you prayed, was you walking with God? Was just your prayer time a step? with God I know what you think preacher I read my Bible today wonderful when you was reading your Bible was you walking with God or was you just using that Bible reading time as a step with God now I know what you're thinking preacher everywhere I go God goes with me I know that but are you going where he goes and wherever where he goes Amen. are you walking with him or are you just stepping with him? I know what you're thinking. Preacher, I witnessed to somebody today. I gave out a track. Wonderful. While you was doing that, was you walking with God or was you taking a step with God? Preacher, I, I meditated on the Lord today. Wonderful. While you was doing that, was you walking with him or was you taking a step with him? And then the big preacher, I even fasted today. You're, you get a halo. But while you was fasting, was you walking with God? Or was you just stepping with God? I prayed today. That's good enough. I read my Bible today. Okay, check mark. I'm in good shape. Oh, I even gave out a track today, or I invited somebody to church today. I told somebody about the Lord today. Wonderful. But that's it. Preacher, I, I meditated on the Lord all day. I had a song on my heart, and I meditate on the Lord all day. Well, that's all you did. Took a step. I don't even go to hit fasting. I've seen all of our waistlines. Uh uh. Stepping with God instead of walking with God. Can I say one who merely chooses to step with God often becomes, first of all, self-satisfied. I prayed. It's good enough. I read the Bible. It's good enough. I witnessed. It's good enough. I meditated. See, you are choosing how far you're going to go, and you are choosing whether or not you feel you have satisfied the requirements of being a believer today. You become self-satisfied. You're complacent in that. You're content in that. You came to church tonight content in that. I did my bare minimum requirements. But how many of us really walk with God today? See, the more you walk with God, the more His heartbeat becomes your heartbeat. The more you see the world as He sees the world, the more you become burdened like He's burdened, the more you become like Christ. Amen. When you're walking with Him, nothing less than holiness satisfies you. Amen. When you walk with Him, you don't see any place to sit down. 
You don't see any place to get complacent. You don't see any place to be content. When you pray, you need to pray more. Uh, when you read, you need to read on. Uh, when you witness, you need to witness with fervency. Uh, hey, you even find that you fasted and you didn't even know you was fasting because you were so enthralled with Him because you're walking with Him. How many times in Jesus' earthly ministry did He go and not even take time to eat? because the work of the Father was before him. The one time we find he's hungry and he goes to get some figs off a fig tree and there weren't any and he cursed the fig tree. When they come back by, the things withered up and died. How many times has he come to get fruit in our life and didn't find anything? Because we were self-satisfied. See, those who are merely choosing to step with God often become self Satisfied, But not only that, they learn to become self-sufficient, self-reliant. We all, we're going to take a poll right now. How many of you know you need God? Now here's why we raise that hand. We know we need God because we need all those things we think we need in our life those things we can't provide for ourselves I need health so I better better have God around Biden stays in office a couple more years I'm going to need him to get groceries and gas and everything else in the world I need protection for my family I need this 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 but when it comes to spiritual things you don't need God you become self-reliant, self-sufficient. Right. When's the last time you needed a bill paid? Instead of trying to work it out and figure out how you're going to get it paid, you just spent time talking to God about it. Amen. It's, it's easy to just throw down a credit card. Bill's paid. Huh? It's easy. Transfer some money from somewhere, it's paid. It's easy. Ask a relative, it's paid. Uh, when's the last time you asked God to pay your bill? See, when you're walking with God, you're fulfilling Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And while you're seeking Him, guess what He does for you? He pays your bills. Because you're not worried about your bills because all you're doing is walking with Him. But when you become self-reliant, you've got to figure out how you're going to put food on your table and when you can't, then you go to God. When was the last time that you prayed, you wasn't praying for a revival, you was thanking God you was revived? Revival's just not something when we have a meeting. But see, when you're walking with God, you have no need of revival. Amen. But when you're self-sufficient, and all of a sudden you come into church and you haven't really prayed and you haven't really read the Bible. I mean, your eyes read words, but you didn't read it. You didn't see what it was saying. And you did talk to God, but it didn't get to the ceiling. Because while you was talking to Him, your mind was reeling how you was going to figure out everything in your life. You're self-sufficient. It's a wonder God puts up with any of us. But you finally come into church and all of a sudden somebody has been walking with God and it's evident because they got a glow about them and you don't have that glow and all of a sudden you get under conviction about that and you don't even realize why you're being convicted because you've already made your excuse to God why you ought to be blessed and why you ought to be revived because you passed out of track and you've taken a step here and taken a step there. You haven't walked with him because you're self-sufficient. If we're honest, the only time we really depend on God is when we come to the end of things and we can't figure it out no more. Right. Getting real quiet in here tonight. Can I say one who merely chooses to step with God often becomes self-serving. 
self-calculating. You calculate everything. Can I say logic is the enemy of faith? To walk with God, you've got to learn to walk by faith. There are some things you can never calculate. For years, Miss Annette and I would try and figure out how we'd come out of the end of the month, but we always did, and we never knew how, it would, how ends meet. It's amazing. We didn't have enough coming in. We had more going out, but when it all was said and done, it was all taken care of. How did that happen? God. You see, when you walk with God and you quit trying to calculate everything, you'll find there are a lot of things you don't have answers for, but you don't care because you're walking with Him. See, I just believe the Bible. I believe He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I believe the earth's His footstool. I believe He really owns it all. I mean, there ain't anything God can't do. I really believe that. Nothing's impossible with God. And can I say, yeah, uh, uh, for 30 years, He is over and over and over re reiterated that to me, uh, and I've just seen Him work. It amazes me. Some folks will have some of the most dreadful diseases, but they walk with God, and you never even know they're sick. But people that step with God, they get a hangnail and they want the whole world to pray for them. Hmm? I learned a long time ago, and I preached it to you, but some of you don't get it. I'm in His hand. His hand's in the Father's hand. And before it could even get to me that I even find out I've got it, it's got to come through both their hands. I learned that he filters out things I can't handle, but if he allows it to come into my life, he has a purpose for it. Some of you are praying for the very thing God has put in your life to use to be a, a witness or a blessing or uh, maybe to break your heart so you'll start walking with him instead of stepping with him. Uh, and you're asking God to remove the very instrument he's trying to use in your life. And you don't know that because you're not walking with him. You're trying to calculate everything. Huh? It cracks me up. People, the first time they go to Disney World, for whatever reason, they'll call me or Tommy because we've both been there a thousand times. And they're trying to calculate how they're going to calculate Disney World. How do you calculate the first time you walk in on Main Street and you go, how do you calculate that? Huh? How do you navigate it all? Huh? Why don't you just go and experience it and enjoy it? I've got to calculate it. I've got to be at this right at this time, and this right at this time, and this right at this time, or this right at this time. Hey, i got news for you. Every now and then I've got to stop and get one of them Mickey bars. You ever had one? It's like a dilly bar on a stick, man. Yeah, the fudge is real thick. And you got to eat it fast because it's hot down there and it'll melt. So, man, you're just shoving that thing in your mouth. It's wonderful. You can't calculate shoving an ice cream down your mouth. Huh? When Jordan was little, him and my father-in-law got them turkey legs down there in whatever cowboy land is. Huh? Venture land, I think, whatever, whatever, huh? Them turkey legs are this big. Inflation's happened. They're only this big now. They're like a chicken, a chicken leg now. Huh? You can't calculate when you're going to get a turkey leg. You just walk by and get a smell and say, that's what I want. Some of you try to calculate every facet of your life. Why don't you just walk with God and enjoy what God has for you? You might get to smell some things. You might get to eat some things. You might get to enjoy some things. I, I see some of the most stressed out people in the world are Christian people. It's because you don't walk with God. You're just stepping. And you become self-serving. 
I got to tell the story because it's it's really <laughs> weighing heavy on people. Tonight. We was on a cruise. When was that? We was on a cruise last year. A year ago today. Yeah, it was my birthday. And I'm sitting up on the deck looking at the ocean. And my darling daughter, my darling wife, they got this self-serve ice cream. You can get it all day long. Just go get a cone and put it on there and eat it. Sid Tex, you want ice cream? Duh, yeah. It's always in season to eat ice cream. Am I right? Amen. Even when I ain't hungry. Last night, I, she gorged me with food. And she, we're sitting there, and she's like, want ice cream? Yep. <laughs> you want it on a cone, or you want it in a bowl with syrup? Well, let me think. Yep, syrup. Let's do it. She brought me the biggest bowl of ice cream. I was stuffed. I ate it all. That's the way to do it. So I, I tell her, yes, I want ice cream. So here comes my dar darling daughter running up these steps, running at me because it's hot and the ice cream's melting and the wind's blowing 30 miles an hour on top of that thing. Somebody about six rows over from me got that ice cream because it blew right all over them. Huh? <laughs> you can't calculate it. If so, your ice cream's going to get blown away. Huh? People calculate all the time. There's one thing about planning. But again, we had a plan with the idea of Lord's will. Huh? A lot of people step with God. And they become self-serving. Also, now listen to me, this might be the most important point of the night. Those that step with God, Brother Clint, they're capable of becoming self-sabotaging. They end up beating themselves up and become self-defeating because they can't figure out why their Christian life isn't what the Bible explains it should be. They don't have the joy, and they see that we should be full of joy unspeakable and full of glory. And they understand the joy of His salvation is our strength, and they wonder why they're so weak, uh, and they wonder why things bother them that don't bother other Christians, and they wonder why they never live in victory, and they wonder why uh, they seem like they're spinning their wheels, and they just never get to rest in the Lord. Uh, Hebrews 4 9 says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Yes. We don't have to worry about being lost. We don't have to worry about anything because of who God is. But there are some people who just step and they keep stepping, Brother Josh, and they can't figure out why they don't have the victory that the Bible explains that they should have. Uh, and they so constantly live in defeat because they are self sabotaging. When you're walking with God, can I help you with something? You never have to compare yourself to anybody else. Yeah. Because you're walking with God. Right. Can I say this? When you're walking with God, you never worry about anything. Because you're walking with God. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about the God of glory. I'm talking about the King of kings and Lord of lords. Uh, you and I, as His children, have the privilege to be able to walk with Him. Huh? There's never a time that she could ever call and ask for anything. I wouldn't be there. Because she's my child. That bodes with him, and it bodes with him. If I know they have need of anything, I'll do without so they can have. And the Bible says if we, knowing how to give good gifts to our children, how much more God knows how to give good gifts to us. When you're walking with him, you don't worry about anything. Hmm? When the kids were little and they didn't realize, you know, they hadn't figured out yet I wasn't Superman. They thought I was the biggest, the strongest. I could do everything. That's how we ought to be with God. Amen. And when you walk with him, that's the way it is. Amen. Little Ella Rose hadn't figured it out yet. Yeah, I'm talking to you. As soon as she learns to say the two words, Big Reb, she owns it all. <laughs> I 
I know you love Trevor. And I know you love these kids. But when that little Elizabeth looks at you and says, Daddy, it's over. How do you think God feels when we just reach our hand up to His and we just walk with Him? You become self-sabotaging just taking steps because you're constantly trying to figure out what's wrong with you. Can I say there's nothing wrong with you? You just haven't learned the secret. It's more than steps. It's walking with Him. I love Bella Boo. I love you. Do not love going out on visitation with her because she steps very slowly. It's kind of like when Miss Annette and I go on a walk. My wife loves going on walks. She loves it. My wife's only this tall, and she's learned all her life to get where other people are going. She has to go quicker. Well, if you're from the south, you have a draw. You say, y'all. And your words tend to be the length of sentences. Well, I walk with a draw. And that hates walking with me. Because I walk with a draw. She don't. Huh? Can I say, there's nothing wrong with you. You just need to catch up with God. Amen. You're just taking steps when the Lord wants you to walk with Him. Amen. He'll show you things that you never dreamed about looking at and experiencing. But see... You can't walk with Him when you're constantly focusing on you. That's the whole problem. You're trying to figure out what's wrong with you. Can I say God didn't make any junk? God loves you. He loves you exactly the way you are. He saved you because He loves you. And He loves you no less than anybody else and no more than anybody else. And everything He has, He has for you. You gotta learn to walk with him. Amen. You'll not beat yourself up when you're walking with him. But those who choose to just step with him, many of them are self sabotaging. Can I say, I've met few, I mean, uh, quite a few, who become self seeking. They're selfish. My right, my claim to myself is the essence of sin. And no matter how much you point out to them, their whole problem is themselves because they want to put themselves above God. Amen. All they do is get mad and justify themselves. Hmm? You can share scripture after scripture after scripture and people who are mm, selfish, they've learned to manipulate the scriptures so that they always come out looking good. Well, let me ask you a question. Are you walking with God? Because if you're not walking with God, you're not looking good. You're falling behind. And so many are self-seeking. It's all about them. Hmm? I hate saying this, because every time I say something like this, and it goes out on the Internet, it comes back to bite me, but oh well. Over the years, there's been a few times we've had poundings at Christmas time, and we've helped families in the church. I believe that's right. I believe we ought to do that. I believe the Bible teaches us to take care of our own, and certainly any time I find out anybody in the church is struggling, we'll do whatever we can to help them. But it amazes me. It doesn't amaze me. Miss Marcy, the ones that seem to always be struggling are the ones who don't live the Bible way. If you put God first, and you, you're faithful to God, and you tithe whatever God blesses you with, you'll never be without. Amen. I've just seen that happen. I mean, you want a marvel? Here's a marvel. Tell me if I, and I'm not picking on you, but tell me if I'm wrong. Have you not stood and testified and said when you was born that they said that you was going to be mentally retarded? Yep. And didn't you work a job in a school for years? And then you got injured and you, you had some surgeries and all that and then you couldn't work. 
And you haven't worked how long now? Almost 12 years. 12 years almost. Have you missed any meals? Have you gained weight? Yeah, uh-huh. Listen. Are you living in a house much nicer than you was living in 12 years ago? Huh? Has God been good to you? Yeah. Huh? Have you ever come begging me or the church for anything? No. I'll tell you one thing he does. He's faithful. Huh? He's learned to just be faithful with whatever God's prospering with, and he's never done without. Huh? He's told you. Ain't worked in 12 years. Huh? I don't know if he worked in 12 years before. No, I'm just teasing. Huh? I love Brother Tony. Brother Tony inspires me. Huh? Because the world was going to throw him away. He said he'd never amount to nothing. Huh? Wait till we get to heaven. You see how many souls he's got in heaven just from the missionaries he's helped through the years. Huh? Amen. But it amazes me, Brother Phil, those that aren't faithful. When we have the pounding, they're the first ones in line. And some of them learned they need to get faithful about Thanksgiving time if they want pounding time. You know what I'm saying? They won't be here all year, but come around in the holiday time, all of a sudden they're here, and they just hang around after service. They're just waiting for Brother Doug to say, Hey, how you doing? You need anything? Huh? Hmm? Huh? You know why? Because they're self-seeking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've learned if you do good to others, God will be good to you. I've learned if you crash your bread on the waters, it comes back to you. Huh? How many of you ever know Brother Mike Goodson? Everybody knows Brother Mike. It's been a long time since I told this story, but I'm going to tell the story. I'll never forget. I met Brother Mike right before Miss Annette and I got married. And then after we got married, my pastor had Brother Mike preach revivals you know, just about every year. Well, I'll never forget one of the first revivals he come through Lord told me to buy him a pair of shoes so I bought him a pair of shoes alright so what the Lord said to do I just did it now fast forward years I'm talking years I had lost contact with brother Mike didn't even know how to get a hold of him and one morning the Lord woke me up and said you need to book brother Mike Goods and come preach meeting so I didn't even know how to get a hold of him. I called my pastor. He said, well, I got one phone number. I don't know if this is still the same number or not. So I called the number. Of course, the area code had changed like I did around here. So I ended up finding the right area code. I called him. I said, Brother Mike, you may not remember me. I told him who I was, where I'm from. And before I could get out, I said, I remember you. He said, you bought me a pair of shoes. He said, I got them on right now. I say that, say this. You would not believe how many times somebody's bought me a pair of shoes. Not that I was in need of them, just God never forgot when I was faithful to mind Him and God's touched somebody else's heart to buy me a pair of shoes. You say, what are you trying to say, preacher? I'm saying you can't outdo God. You can't outgive God. If you learn to walk with God, you'll be amazed at the things God will do. Huh? Well, Tony, I hope I didn't embarrass you. Didn't mean to. But if I did, oh well, I'll take a baby aspirin. Now, I know Brother Tony. Hey, if there's anybody that's Teflon, that's Brother Tony. Brother Tony Teflon. He, he just. But he knows where he is with God. Now, listen. I was thinking about this as I was studying this. Now, we look back at Enoch. Enoch was and he was not, for God took him. God translated him. Now I was thinking, if we would walk with God instead of stepping with God, I wonder what he'd translate out of our lives. Amen. Maybe he'd translate the problems out of our lives. Maybe he'd translate the peril out of our lives. Maybe he'd translate the pain out of our lives. Maybe he'd translate uh, 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 the panic out of our lives. Uh, maybe he would translate the, uh, uh, the pitfalls away from our lives. Uh, maybe uh, if we just walk with God, the things that bother us now will not have an effect on us because we're walking with God. Amen. Let me give you this and I'll be done. Now, I know a lot of preachers, they'd, they'd stop right there. But 
how horrible of a preacher would I be to tell you to walk with God and I don't tell you how to walk with God? You know, it sounds simple. Just walk with God. Brother Donald, all you need to do is walk with God. Okay, where do I start? How do I do that? Because you told me everything I'm doing right now, I'm just stepping. How do I walk with God? Can I say in order to walk with God, we must abandon ourselves to Him completely. When you got born again, you didn't trust in anything else other than Him to save you. You threw yourselves on the mercy of God and called out to Him and asked Him to save you. Can I say as a child of God, we've got to learn to abandon ourselves in a similar way to Him completely. God, I come to you bringing nothing but tattered garments, but God, uh, all that I am, all that I ever be, God, I'm throwing myself on your mercy. I just want it to be me and you, God. You've got to learn to abandon yourselves to Him. Again, in lieu of his responsibilities, in lieu of his ripened age, in lieu of what uh, everybody else was doing around him, Enoch walked with God. We've got to learn to abandon ourselves to God in lieu of everything else going on around us. We've got to abandon ourselves to him completely. Then we must learn to align ourselves with him scripturally. God will never bless anything that we do that goes contrary to the Word of God. And can I say the Spirit of God will never lead you contrary to the Word of God. But we've got to learn to align ourselves with Him scripturally. When God says, Thou shalt, you better. And when He says, Thou shalt not, you better not. Uh, and when He tells us all those things we don't like, we like it uh, when we get to reading about heaven. And we like it when we get to reading about the blessings of God. But when He tells us to forgive... Uh, when we don't want to forgive that person, or when he tells us to uh, uh, move when we don't want to move, and when he tells us whatever, we've got to align ourselves with him scripturally. Hmm? Let me help you something. The way of a transgressor is hard, but the ways of God are life and peace. Huh? But we've got to align ourselves with him scripturally. Some of you aren't getting anywhere with God because you're fighting against the book. I've seen this, Brother Ray, you have too, where there are some people who try to live for God, but yet still live as close to the world as they can and get away with it. Don't work that way. You're not going to walk with God holding on to the world with one hand. We've got to abandon ourselves to Him completely, align ourselves with Him scripturally, but then we've got to adore Him supremely. God does not take a back seat to anyone. When you adore Him supremely, He'll let you love your wife with all your heart. He'll let you love your children with all your heart. He'll let you love your grandchildren with all your heart. He'll let you love your church family with all your heart. He just wants your heart first. And when you give Him your heart first, then you'll find that all the other places just fall right in line. But when you start loving anybody or anything more than Him, the best you're ever going to do is taking steps. I believe the Bible says, not, love not the world nor the things of the world. When you love the world, you're the enemy of God. Hmm? God help us to just adore Him and love Him supremely. You know, bring revival to this world, it's not the next great Billy Sunday. It's not having 60 days of fasting and 60 days of meeting. What will bring the next great revival is when we just fall in love with Jesus all over again. Remember when you first got saved? The whole life of a Christian was new to you. You couldn't wait to get back to church. Couldn't wait to read the Bible. Couldn't wait to sing. Couldn't wait. I mean, you just couldn't wait because you loved it. You know why? Because you was walking with him. But over time, Some cares have crept in. This is eat at your attention in this area, and this is eat at your attention in this area, and this. And you love God, but just not supremely. He's on a back burner somewhere. 
you put him in the forefront and you start aligning yourself with him scripturally and you start abandoning you to yourself completely you just abandon yourself to him completely you know what you'll find you're walking with him on the night that Jesus was betrayed he told his disciples one of you shall betray me freaked them all out even though he'd been telling them that he was going to Jerusalem they was going to crucify him you know angry men were going to crucify him he'd, he'd been warning them and warning them but they were Jewish but they could have been good Baptists because a lot of it went in one ear and out the other until after he ascended and went back home and the Holy Ghost reminded them but that night all of them but one said Lord is it I Lord is it I Lord is it I and of course Peter having no patience I identify with Peter so much and I'm not talking about the Peter that wrote first and second Peter I'm talking about the Peter that got in trouble all the time Peter just finally looks at John and John's over there just leaning on the bosom of the Lord he said John ask him who it is and John didn't say Lord is it I John said Lord who is it and the Lord answered him the same one I'm sopping with right now John didn't ask him if it was him because John was walking with him John was hearing the heartbeat of God why well, would to God I'd ever get that close I could hear his heartbeat I hear people preach all the time all oh, heartbeats and missions heartbeats I just like to hear his heartbeat Oh, I want to get that close oh, I'd like to get so close that when everybody else is trying to figure out what it is I can just say Lord what is it hmm? you can get that close when you're walking with him I ask you again are you walking with him or are you just stepping with him God help us to learn to walk with the Lord. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. While they're picking out a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, that you're not only a God big enough to save us, you're a God big enough to sustain us, but you're also such an intimate God we can walk with you and have fellowship with you God help us from this night forward to purpose in our heart to do those things that will help us to walk with you and quit being satisfied just stepping in your direction speak to hearts now Father Lord, I know it wasn't a salvation message, but God, if somebody here is tonight is lost, I pray tonight you'd convict them of sin. Tonight would be the night that they learn what the walk of a Christian is all about. They get born again. Help your people now, Lord, to realize the joy in walking with you. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.